Hey everyone, uh, what we're doing is unboxing the Zeta FX79 Flying Wing or what some people would call the Blended Wing Body BWB. Look it up on the internet, check it out on Wikipedia. There's a lot to be learned. Here's the box. It arrived after one week. We ordered from a major retailer. It was, in fact, on a discounted price. And, of course, the box showed up with stuff in it. You can see nothing but uh, packaging tape right here, but uh, that's the way it showed up. And I'll get right to what was in it. All right. The first thing, and most important, restructions. The instructions themselves are uh, reasonably uh, self-explanatory, and they uh, cover the entire assembly. And of course, this is not the ready-to-fly version. This is the poor boy version, if you will, which is um, the kit. That means everything that you really need to make it fly does not come with it. But the essentials of the airframe are all here. And when I say all, it appears they're all here. We'll go through it real quick. I've opened the box. You'll find that it was uh, very well packaged. Three major assemblies. You've got the center section and the two wings. And uh, once you open the center body uh, or center wing section, uh, you'll see what's inside. There are a couple of goodies, and for those of you that like flying wings, you're really going to love this. This is one of the larger, although not the largest. You probably know the largest of the popular flying wings uh, in the radio control community is actually the Skywalker X8 at 2,122 millimeters wingspan. Uh, this one, the FX79 by Zeta, is 2,000 millimeters in wingspan, and it's, I believe, 862 millimeters long. Uh, nevertheless, let's take a look. There's the instructions. Here's what you get. I've already taken the opportunity to remove it from its packaging. This was all properly bubble wrapped, and I found it to be excellent in its wrapping. I mean, the, uh, the wrapping itself, nothing damaged. Got a minor scrunch right here on this uh, inboard flap and a little bit of uh, filler. We'll take care of that without any problem at all. All right, that being said, let's go through what you get. The center wing section consists of all of this EPO foam. And, of course, here's where the motor goes, back here. Uh, that's the motor cover. Uh, of course, the, uh, the canopy cover, if you will, or equipment bay cover. Here are the two vertical stabilizers, and they're ready to go with all the emblazoning with logos and such. But uh, you have uh, a couple of pull ties on here that are used to... Uh, to just snap it off and snap it back on to the wing spar. That's how this thing clamps down. It's, it's held down with the tab up front and it just goes right into the nose section. And then it clamps down onto this, uh, what looks to be about a 10 millimeter wing spar. All right, uh, carbon fiber tubing for the wing spar. And uh, you've got carbon fiber tubing uh, that extends out to, to partially uh, uh, to the wingtips. All right, uh, here's the nose section. You can see that it's got indexing with these uh, dowels, and the dowels just drop straight into the preformed CNC uh, molded platform. And uh, you glue this on later. But nevertheless, there you go. Let's take a look at uh, the inside. You can see they call this cavernous, and that would be uh, pretty accurate. Uh, lots of space for gear, including some insulating 
platforms for your equipment. Uh, everything from FPV camera uh, to uh, battery to uh, speed controller for your motor. Uh, the motor for this is recommended uh, to be uh, 3542, I believe, and that 3542 motor uh, is uh, should should be in the range of 850 kV on its uh, volt speed rating. All right, uh, with that, uh, here's your motor mount. Uh, you've got uh, cabling, of course, control horns, push rods or control rods, and mounting hardware. Basically, everything's here, including even a battery strap for a nominal size battery. All right, uh, that now completes that. Let's go to the rest of the explanation. The bay gets bigger. Can you believe it? Look at all that space. You've got outboard space here outside of the equipment bay, and you can use this for your FPV equipment. If you're not an FPV or first person view fanatic or pilot, then uh, this may be irrelevant, but uh, most people are gonna be buying this for its FPV features. Uh, the wing spar itself, let's take a look here. We'll just turn her around and let you see how this is set up. I'm going to go ahead and remove the wing spar. And uh, there you go. That's it in a nutshell. Here are your uh, finger holes for self-launching. Uh, again, the inboard flaps and... Uh, 12 gram servos times two is enough to run the uh, elevons, uh, which are uh, on the wings themselves. These inboards you can actually trim out with uh, a hacksaw or an X-Acto knife. I'd probably use a hacksaw on this so you get enough of an air gap that you don't have interference issues and you don't have to be doing a lot of trimming later. An X-Acto would make a surgical cut and leave all the flash right in between the gap and uh, it serves you no purpose. All right, uh, so that's the center wing section. Let's go to the wing and you can open this on either end, but I'd say don't open it on the foam end because if you happen to screw up, you cut right into your wing. So I'd say go with the uh, end that doesn't offer instant frustration. All right, uh, I'm not the best with these skizzers, but uh, let's just see what we can get here. And uh, we'll get right through the plastic. I'm not going to open both wings, uh, amazingly enough. Uh, because we're not going to assemble this today anyway. All we're going to do is make sure that if you're contemplating purchasing one of these, you know exactly what you're going to get if it arrives in the same condition as ours did. All right, uh, we've opened the bag and the bubble wrap is removed. All right, the wing itself, here's your Elevon. Uh, again, it's just your typical hinged foam flight control, but this works as your combination elevator and aileron. And uh, if you look into the theory of it, you can actually make it create a little bit of drag and uh, cause a little bit of yawing effect from the drag that results from deflection. All right, uh, you ain't gonna get much yaw out of it though, that's for sure. All right, uh, there's the top wing. Here's the underside of the wing. Very straightforward again. Your wing spar or uh, wing tube extension already pre-installed by the factory. You've got all the uh, uh, logo emblazoning all over the place. This will be coming off in our case, but uh, it's quite uh, appealing and allows you to maintain orientation if you're not uh, able to otherwise see the wing orientation when it's flying. 
All right, uh, here's the uh, wing attachment point. And uh, some people have said online, by the way, that these uh, wing alignment uh, uh, pieces uh, have been missing from some of the kits. I didn't find that to be the case, so before you get alarmed, if you buy one, make sure you look into the wing bags because it's not in the parts kit. It's already pre-installed on each wing. All right, uh, again, this is the uh, FX-79, big brother to the Phantom FX-61 by Zeta Science. And you can visit their website for more information at newzeta.com, N-E-W-Zeta, Z-E-T-A dot com. And uh, I don't believe they sell directly. So uh, you'll have to go through some form of a retailer uh, I believe that uh, the big guys in Hong Kong no longer carry this, but you'll find some major retailers do, and you'll find them on sale from time to time. I found this one on sale, and I'm glad I did at the time. All right, uh, that completes uh, pretty much the, uh, the unboxing. We've got a big surprise for you coming up related to this FX-79, so don't forget to like and subscribe because you wouldn't want to miss out on part two. All right, uh, other than that, make sure you get a haircut.